All right, today's project is to replace a toilet. Standard toilet. Um, there's a couple of things you want to know before you do this, but you can certainly save yourself some money because this project could cost you $300 or more for a plumber to do it, so why not do it yourself? So one of the things you want to note first is how far from the wall your, your exit port is. So if you look at where the bolts are, you can see that it's 12 inches from the wall. That's a standard closet um, flange width from the wall. So most toilets are gonna be 12 inches from the wall. If you have something different, I've installed a 10 inch one before. Um, you can change them a little bit um, after you get the old toilet off. But if you check that, that's your standard toilet. The other thing you'll want to note is underneath where the water valve is because you'll want to turn that off. So we can turn that off right now. Some of these will be um, multiple turns. Some of them could be a quarter turn. Um, there's lots of different types of shutoff valves. So we've shut that off. And what we're going to do now is take a look inside the tank to see what we have. Because this is one that's a tank separate from the bowl. And you can see down here inside, it looks like some putty, either putty or corrosion from that's where the bolts, the tank bolts connect to the bowl. And so we're gonna have to deal with that. But for now, we're just gonna flush this, let the water go down. It won't fill back up because we turned the water off. And then we'll go out and we'll look at our tools and supplies we'll need for this project. <laughs> Okay, so now let's talk about the supplies and the tools that you'll need for this job. So out here in front of me, I have, first of all, a bucket with a sponge that I use to get as much water out of the, the toilet as you can. Um, and the sponge is really handy because it can get really down in there. You don't, when you're moving the old toilet, you don't want water going everywhere. So we'll use that. Um, you typically need a screwdriver through the tank and some type of wrench underneath to take the tank bolts off. So those will come in handy. You can almost never go wrong with channel locks because it's a nice adjustable wrench, especially if this one doesn't work. You'll need a putty knife to get off the wax ring. There's a wax ring between your toilet and the floor, and you normally need this to scrape it off. I have a container here, it could be any kind of container. In case you turn off the water, you disconnect it, and the water valve doesn't shut completely off. Sometimes you'll need something for it to drip in while you're changing it, unless you want another project and you replace that shutoff valve. So those are tools. So now let's talk about some supplies you might need. This is, as you can see on the, the, the note here, this is a wax ring. I don't use these anymore. Oftentimes these will come with your toilet um, because you'll need to replace it. A wax ring is kind of a one-time use. You see they give you new bolts to to use on your flange to bolt your new toilet to it. Um, but this is basically a wax ring with a little plastic insert that you put on the bottom of the toilet and then all your water runs down through here and that creates a seal between your toilet bowl and your floor. These are messy, I don't like dealing with them. You'll see when we take it off how, how nasty this wax is. But I use these Sani seals. Uh, they've come out probably 10 years ago or so. These are really nice because they're flexible, they're reusable. You can you know, take your toilet on and off and on and off, whereas with the wax ring, you're constantly replacing the wax seal. So I really, uh, there are lots of different ones of these on the market. I've just started with the Sani Steel, and you can even stack these if you have extra height, you can use that. And they give you the, the closet flange bolts as well in a little pack here. So we'll, we'll go through that when we get to it. Now for inside the tank, depending on the toilet you buy, you're gonna have some type of a bolt. If you buy a really expensive toilet, you're gonna to have a bolt that has a nice rubber coating on the top and you don't have to worry about it. For other ones, you'll just get a cheap bolt. So the reason I have a, this is a magnet, because what you wanna make sure you do is have a nice brass um, bolt because it's in, more impervious to water. Whereas steel, which you can tell that's steel because the magnet attracts the ferrous material, this is not, uh, ferrous material so this won't rust as quickly now you'll notice if you do that to other pieces of that the wing nuts or the nuts or washers those are all steel that doesn't matter because they won't be in the water so 
you can get yourself a set of tank bolts that are brass on Amazon for like five bucks. This is more like $17, maybe up to $20. Well worth it, because again, you can take it on and off. Then you might also need a new water supply hose. Um, I've switched to these a long time ago. This is just an assortment I had of leftover things come in various sizes. You normally are gonna have a 3 8 inch compression, compression fitting on your shutoff valve. And then at the top, this is a regular water valve um, in, um, nut there. Now don't get confused. This one still even has the label on it. This looks similar, but it isn't. This is more for a faucet. So this is a different type of thread on the top. And you see these other ones normally have a nice big wide uh, grip so you can just hand tighten it onto the toilet bowl or the toilet tank, sorry. And then lastly, and especially if you're getting older like me, you want some additional protection for when you're going down on the floor, a hard ceramic towel, put some nice gel pads of some type on your knees. So let's go take off the old toilet. Okay, now we're back to the toilet. We're gonna, we took the tank off before, flushed it, and so there's hardly any water there. We'll move the tank lid out of the way, and we can bring our bucket up here with our sponge. And again, if you open this, it's not gonna do anything because it'll always leave a little bit of water in there. But just kind of get your sponge down in there and let it, let it sit and soak up some water. You're gonna get a little bit of water on the ceramic towel. Just reserve yourself to know that that's gonna happen. Um, but we wanna to try to get as much water out of here as possible. Let the sponge soak it up. And then we will start seeing whether or not this is some kind of a coating over top of the bolts or whether or not that's just decayed metal over time. And it really doesn't matter a whole lot if you leave those bolts on there. If you're, if you're strong enough to take the whole toilet out by itself in one piece, then you don't need to worry about these bolts. Um, if it's a, definitely a lot more manageable to move the old toilet if you do it in two pieces, if you can get those apart. So we'll try that. And if it doesn't work, we'll just have to move the whole thing. And uh, my videographer, Jimmy here, if he has any questions as we go through this, he'll just ask them on the video so that if he has a question, maybe you have the same kind of question. So we'll see how well I explain things. I think you've done a thorough job so far. All right, so that's about all the water we're gonna get out of that. So that was kind of the easy part, except for going around that flange or that flapper. Oh, and I guess I should explain, one of the main causes of toilet failure is this flap. You, know, you can buy, you can buy um, replacement ones of these, but you'll lose seal between this flap and the, the pipe that's going down to the bowl. And sometimes you can get away with just replacing that. We wanted to replace this toilet for several reasons. One, it was leaking at this flap. Um, secondly, it's not the standard 1.6 gallon flush or, um, and it's also a really low one. This is a 15 inch height. And so most of the ones that you wanna buy now are a 16 and a half inch height. Um, and they call them chair height. We like the elongated bowl. You can get toilets in either elongated bowl or a round bowl. The elongated bowl gives you a little more uh, room to sit and position yourself. Uh, the 16 and a half inch height is definitely better. Uh, it's more comfortable to get it on and off of. And so as you uh, put the sponge in here, you can really put it down in that trap. Toilets come with a built-in trap. Try to get as much of the water out of there as you can because you want it to be as dry as possible when you actually pull it off of the floor. And just so our audience knows, John, did you uh, clean the toilet bowl before you? I did not. The majority of the time, you're, you're just from your bowl, if you think about it, you put your brush down in here and you, you brush that mm -hmm. when you put your toilet bowl cleaner in it. So usually the water is pretty clean. So I don't really worry about it. You can also use rags. This is just a sponge I use for like washing the car. So it's not that big a deal. But you can see how much water we got out of the toilet that was sitting in there. Now it's pretty dry. Um, I should also mention the cost of toilets. Um, you can buy a toilet pretty cheap for a hundred bucks, a basic one. 
um, all the way to like four hundred dollars or more. So, you know, if you're if you're going to do this job yourself, that would be your total cost is is just that your your maybe your sandy seal and some brass bolts and then the toilet itself and then your time. You know, maybe it's going to take you an hour. If it's the first time you're doing it, maybe it takes you two or three hours, but you still save a lot of money in doing it. Okay, so we got the water out. We turned the water off. One of the things we're going to have to do, sometimes these are just sitting on there. Sometimes they're really stuck on there. These are just the covers for the, for the bolts. This is on there pretty good. There we go. See how that popped off. That was a nice tight fit on that side. And that's off of there. So now we're going to take our crescent wrench. And this is what bolts it to the floor. Almost all toilets, there's only two bolts that bolt it to the floor. And once you get it started, you can normally just do it by hand. Unless it's gotten corroded. And then you can always get, use a socket set on this too if you want. Um, usually there, it's only a turn or two before you can turn it by hand. This one is a little more corroded. There is a chance that you could break the toilet um, as you're you know, doing things. Sometimes if you tighten this down too much, you could break the toilet because remember it's porcelain. So it's, it is breakable. So you, now you can see the closet bolt that's that right there without the nut. And if we like it, we don't have to replace it. Um, but if you don't, you think it's too corroded, then you can replace it. As you saw in the supplies that we had a, uh, a new one if we want to use it. After we get these two bolts off, the only thing that'll be stopping us from moving it now will be the, um, that one came off much easier. So now we have these, unless you would want to use these caps again, you'll probably throw them away. Most of the time you'll get a new cap when you get the new toilet. So sometimes you might not like them as much. Um, so I would keep these around until you're sure. Now we're going to use that same crescent wrench and we're going to do the, the valve in the back. And again, always remember it's lefty loosey righty tighty, so you want to go counterclockwise to disconnect this. And you'll, you may normally get a little bit of water that was in the line here. So would you recommend putting a little bucket on? So this is where this, see how I kind of measured this ahead of time. You could have something further on the floor um, and smaller. This was just in case we end up getting a, a decent size drip out of this. You can also disconnect it at the tank if you want and leave this part here. It's whatever is easier for you. And this one is. disconnect it from the top it's it's wanting to stay connected to the hose the nut at the bottom so I'm gonna kind of do both I loosen the bottom we're gonna disconnect the top now that allow us to kind of spin this a little better okay so Normally, if it's going to drip, you see I splash a little on the wall, but if it's going to drip, you'll see this fill up and then it'll start dripping down below it. So we'll just leave that sit there. It's not in our way. And if it catches some water, then we know we have a little bit of a leak. If it doesn't, then we know we're good. Okay, so now we're ready to take this off of the floor. It's not connected to the wall, but let's investigate the tank a little more inside to see if we want to attempt to take it apart. So you can see this. 
Ah, it was some kind of a coating, which is good for us because now you're starting to see the bolt head. It's got a nice slot there. And so there's a nut on the other side that we can attempt to try to... So let me take a look underneath here. See if we have... Sometimes it's a wing nut, sometimes it's a bolt. And here it is a wing nut. Let's see if we can see that. And then it's right under here. You can see a wing nut on both sides. And it's not loose by hand. So here's where we'll have to get the channel locks and try those. Ready. Okay, I went and got my channel locks and what I discovered was the bolts through the tank and the wing nuts on the bottom are just completely rusted. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set those aside. We're just gonna take this, again, we're just gonna throw this away because nobody wants it. Habitat Restore won't take it because it's not the 1.6 gallon flush or less. So we're just gonna get rid of this toilet. It'll just be a little more difficult, um, heavy wise. So even though I took water out of the uh, toilet, what I like to do is just have this here. So what I'll do is I'll pick up the toilet and then I'll set it on the, the plastic bag. Then you can pull it up a little bit so that as you're transporting this out. And the other thing I do, I kind of look really funny, but when I'm carrying this out, and I've done a lot of these without having to take the tank off, I just grab it in the middle here. That's kind of like your center of gravity. And then you kind of put your legs there and you're walking kind of like a penguin. And that's really the best way of doing it. So I'm gonna have uh, my videographer, actually I can do it just like this. I just say, um, this is tight quarters in this bathroom and often you'll have tight quarters. We'll move our lid out of the way. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna pick it up and I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna set it right on the bag. Remember there's a wax ring on this. It's either gonna to stick to the floor or stick to your bowl. It's another reason to set it on something that you don't wanna keep transferring wax everywhere. So when we take it off, you normally wanna rock it back and forth a little bit because again, it's a wax seal. So you want to make sure that you break that seal. Sometimes you can hear it. This one's on nice and tight. There, it just broke free. So you can rock it different ways. Now I can tell it's loose. So again, you're just gonna pick up. Now, so that's sitting on a plastic. You can kind of take a look over here and see what we have. You can see the the flange, this is called the closet flange. These are closet bolts. And you see the wax. The wax is in pretty good shape. A lot of times you'll see it, it's a lot darker and a lot more brittle. So we're gonna get this toilet out of here. You don't need to see us carry that out. And then I'll show you how we're gonna clean this up. Okay, so this little bit of water was just in here from our original initial disconnecting of that. The other thing you might wanna think about when you know you're gonna remove the toilet, this is normally what you see. Somebody couldn't paint behind it. This is even looks like some old drywall repair of some type. Um, if that's part of your project, now's your access to that, so you can do that too. Um, it's always good to have some paper towels handy and just kind of clean up any wetness you have here. Now this might be an amateur question, John, but is it necessary to replace that little flange, I guess that's on the wall side? If you, so you can see that this has gotten somewhere, it's kind of corroded. These are, um, I, f I forget what, the, Eustache, Eustachian, it's EU, uh, it's basically a cover to cover up, so you see, you see a pretty big hole here. And so this is just kind of like a beauty ring to cover it. You can buy these that are split, so that they're even plastic that you can kind of form it around there and you can pretty that up. But again, this is right behind the toilet. You can't even really see it. Um, I would definitely do it if you're gonna replace this valve because say this valve was leaking, this one isn't. So I would not do anything with this because you could cut this off and put a new valve on. They have those shark bite uh, valves that are real easy to replace. 
but there's really nothing wrong with this one and you're not going to see it. So I'm not going to replace it. But yeah, for another two or three dollars, you can get a nice pretty silver one. You can get some emery cloth and clean this up to see the copper and those types of things. So now here's where your putty knife is going to come in. And you're basically going to get rid of all this wax. There's another reason you can use your paper towel because you don't want any of this going down the drain, but you do want to clean this up. And you're just gonna remove all this wax because this is where our green foam sani seal is going to go. So we'll just time lapse this up now so you can see kind of a little time consuming, not hard, just a little tedious. And we'll clean this up and we'll go to the next step. All right, so now we've cleaned this up pretty good. You can spend a lot of time, but this is as clean as you need to get it. Um, I, I don't like the little bit of corrosion on these closet bolts, so I've, I've loosened these up. Normally there's, a, again, another nut here that you can get with a crescent wrench and loosen that up. And once you get it to a certain point, those will slip right out. And you see it's flat on one side and round on the other. Um, this is normally where you're going to see these bolts is in this slot so you definitely want them across from each other but normally this is rotated 90 degrees so you can put it in and then slide it and you have some adjustment because it's hard to get these perfect so it's interesting that this closet flange was glued to the pipe here such that they use these side slots um, we can still reuse them again um, but it's interesting that they didn't use the slots like you normally would see. So we're going to take this other one out. So they both came out nice and easy. We'll replace those. But again, keep in mind, this is in good shape. This is a plastic one. They come in metal. Um, they come, they have uh, repair kits. So if your tank or your, your bowl was wobbling, a lot of times it's because this broke. It's cracked. Um, it's fractured or the wood underneath is giving way. So those are some things to look at. And you can see that there's um, wax in these, but, and again, we don't care about them, but this is where you'll see screws. There's four circles here. And that's where the screws are holding everything to the floor. Um, so if you wanted to take this out, you're gonna have to you know, get under the crawl space or, or in the basement or wherever you're located to be able to get at both sides of this. This one's in good shape. We'll use the same bolts. So now, and we've cleaned this up enough. You can still see little spots. You can even see where some of the ceramic tile is cracked a little bit, but our new toilet's gonna go over top of that and you're not gonna see it. You also don't see any caulk um, for this toilet. You don't have to caulk them. Some people do, they like that a better look, especially if it's uneven, we'll get to that later. You might have to put like a little wedge underneath of it and then you wanna caulk to kind of close, close it off and give it a better finished look. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. So now it's time to go and unbox our new toilet and see what we have. Okay, here we have the new toilet. It's an American Standard. It's a, uh, I think it's an edge mirror, elongated bowl. Why doesn't it, maybe it's on the front here. Yes, this is an edge mirror, elongated bowl. So picked it up, it's got a five year warranty, $219 at uh, Lowe's, so. The other thing you want to look at when you're unpacking this, take note of where everything is because let's say you get this apart and you find it's cracked. Well, then you take it back to the store and say, hey, it was cracked. And all I did was take it home. So they usually pack these pretty good. I've never, I've probably replaced 10 toilets in, in my life just as a weekend warrior. And I've never op opened one broken, but you still want to, in case you would need to return it, let's say you bought a 12 inch, uh, the, where the closet flange goes and you needed a 10 inch. Well, now you bought the wrong one, you have to take it back. So here's the tank. You can see that 
that's here. Normally they'll package it with the lid. That's what it feels like underneath. So we'll take that apart separately. Set that down. And then here's the bowl. And they've got, you can see how they've got this corralled in there nicely with all of this cardboard. You can take some of these inserts out, keep things out of your way. And they put the toilet seat in here. And we'll get to this unpacking in a minute. Um, but the, the, the bowl is definitely gonna be the heaviest thing. The good thing about it is there's usually a rim all the way around. Again, this is gonna be your center of gravity. Just wanna hold the box. Again, if you're not strong enough, you can always kind of turn this on its side and drag it out. Um, but you should be able to just pull this right out. It doesn't get caught on that little flap. <laughs> okay. So, again, I think this whole thing weighs um, 96 pounds. So that would be the tank and the bowl. So uh, let me show you the bottom while we're here because it's a nice clean one. See, here's where you, here's where your closet bolts are to go through the floor. This is where you would put your wax seal. So you would, if you were gonna use wax, you would put that here, make sure that the little flange is going down, we go through the hole in the floor, and you'd kind of make sure it's matted up against here nice. And then when you set it down, you have to make sure, you know, you're rocking it back and forth and squishing that wax around to get a good seal. We're not gonna do that because we're gonna have a sani seal. And actually I'll show you that real quick too, because it's gonna be the same as a wax seal pretty much. See how it has this little flange here, so that'll sit down in the pipe, and it's going to go like that. And you see they even have holes here, so you can put it over your floor bolts, and it's already positioned right. And so again, this can squish a lot so that you get a good seal there. So that's what we're going to use and put that on the floor first. Okay, so now, when you're looking at the bowl, this is where the tank sits on. Here's those two holes, and then this is where the tank fits. So in the uh, supplies they give you with the seat here, you see this rubber washer, and that's what's gonna go on your tank. Okay, so this is the seat, just a standard, it's a uh, slow close. A lot of them are giving you a slow close. Here's the instructions in case you need them. I've done enough of these that they're all pretty standard. Um, so now, here's the box that we want. This is your seal. And I'll show you how that, it's gonna sit here, but it's easier to put it on the tank first. So I'll just place it there because that's where it's gonna go. Here's some of those caps that we talked about. If you wanna use the old ones or keep use new ones. Here's the wax ring I told you that you might get. So I got another one that I won't use because I like the Sani seals. But you can also hear in this one as well, they're gonna give you the new bolts. So again, you can use those. The Sani seal comes with bolts, so I'll use those ones instead, but it comes with it in this particular toilet. And some of them now uh, some of the toilets, they're even giving you a look, there's, they give you a little plastic tool. So whether or not you're putting the, whether it's for the bolt that holds the tank on or the bolt that holds your toilet seat on, um, they're giving you some of that as well. So these are some, so now you can see with the design of this one, I get down here and show you, because you'd have a bolt, this is your, your, it's got a built-in washer. A lot of, you saw the one I took off, it had a washer separate and a nut. This is built-in, it's press fit on there. So you're gonna screw this down, and then when you're down here, it covers over that hole nicely. And so once you have that there, 
then you're going to have this as well so that this cap will fit over top of it so that's what's going to hold it in place so that's kind of how that would work um, but we'll get to that once we install it and this is to kind of help hold your um um i'll have to get back to you on this this might be for the top of it um so it snaps in place as well up in the top of this um but we'll go through that when we get to that okay so now let's unpack the tank we'll set all these pieces back in the bag so we don't lose them Questions? No questions, videographer? Uh, no questions so far. Okay, so now we're going to take out the tank. Always cut away from yourself. If you're going to cut those. All right, so here's the inside of this tank. Same kind of a flapper valve. When you flush, it's going to pull up and then it'll fall down. You can see it's a little bit different. The other, it's a little bit newer here. You see, these look like it's almost an aluminum. So maybe I won't need to use my brass. We'll take our magnet to those in a minute to double check that. So if they're aluminum, we'll just leave them. That's the other thing. The more you spend on your toilet, the better hardware you get. I've replaced toilets where they've had, a, it was a rubber coated. And if you look on the bottom, you can see this is a rubber insert. So that's gonna help seal the water as well. As you pull down on this, it's got its own built-in rubber gasket, so to speak. So here's where you notice that I had this in the bowl, but you can see that there's this big kind of a hex nut imprint there. Well, now look, this matches, doesn't it? So now once you line this up, you should be able to put this on there and it fits nice and snug. So you don't see a lot of gap there. And now all you have to do is line this up. And you set it on top and it'll sit there by itself and if you look underneath you'll be able to see the start of the threads so now we got to get the hardware for that we can push these screws down even a little more but we're bolt it here we're out in the garage we'll carry it in in two pieces it'll make it more manageable and then we'll anchor it inside and then here we got to make sure that our tank lid isn't broken just to double check and kind of show this one's made in Mexico lids in good shape so this this will fit on like that so that'll be the finished look of this but again we'll take it apart to carry it in and then we'll start assembly right. okay so this is the sandy seal kit this is the seal I showed you already these are the two closet bolts that it comes with and these are plastic anchors to hold the bolts in place. And then on top of the toilet, you'll have the washer and the nut. Um, I misspoke earlier by saying that these were going to hold the, the tank or the bowl down to the, the floor because these are really to hold the tank down. So we'll go over that in a minute. So this is the kit from Sandy Seal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these bolts and we're going to put them in on the sides where we had the old ones because these are a lot nicer. Now, the other thing you'll notice here is that this thread doesn't go continuously. There's a spot here that there's a, a gap. So if these bolts end up being too long, you can cut them off. So what we'll first do is we'll dry fit this just to make sure these bolts aren't going to be too long because sometimes you get to a point, you try to put this cap on and it's hidden and then it won't go on. So if that's the case, I'll take them back off and I'll cut this with a hacksaw um, or you could potentially bend it back and forth and fatigue it. But in other words, I feel it's better to cut this when it's not part of the toilet. You could take a hacksaw or a reciprocating saw or a, um, an oscillating tool and cut those off. But I worry about when it's anchored to the bowl that you could potentially crack the porcelain. So I don't do it that way. Um, you could also buy closet bolts that are a little shorter. But one thing I like about these sandy seals, it has these holes so you can put these and line it up and it's going to line up perfect. You can see the little extra flap goes down inside. And now we can take these two little 
captures. Actually, these two little captures go first. That's what I was thinking. Because now this will hold it in place. You don't have to. Just kind of wiggle those on there. You don't have to. You can just push these down. You don't have to thread them. They're kind of designed to do that. So that holds the bolt in place. You don't lose it down the drain. Uh, it doesn't fall out. Now we set this over top. And you can see that that doesn't look really that high. But once we put the toilet on, it's going to squish it down and we'll see how much above the toilet um, those bolts are going to be. So we're going to bring the bowl in and we'll dry fit it. If we think it's going to be too tall, we'll take these back off and cut them. If we think it's going to be right, then we can continue on. Okay, so now we have the bowl. And what I do is, again, I, I hold over it, hover over where the seat would be connected. That's a good center of gravity. And then as I pick it up, I don't want to disturb these too much. I want to try to set it straight down on that. So you should be able to try to see either one side or the other, uh, the bolt coming through. You can see how you start seeing the bolt. And you can kind of take a quick look on the other side. Make sure you got it. So there we are. So there it's just kind of setting there. We're not anchored to anything. Um, we're not going to bolt it down yet. We're just trying to fit, seeing how much. And we are going to probably need a spacer. You can see it's kind of rocking quite a bit. The other thing that's interesting is how close this shutoff valve is to the back of the toilet. So the design is a little bit different. You know, so that's one of the things that I didn't kind of take into consideration. We will be all right, but it's going to be awful difficult to turn on and off this this knob here when you're doing multiple turns. Um, so that's one thing we're gonna have to struggle with after we anchor this. Um, but it certainly looks like we're gonna need a little bit of a, a spacer under the, under the front here once we anchor this down. But I think we're gonna be all right on the, the bolt height. That's the wrong one. But these are nice and tall, so that's gonna, that's gonna fit down there okay. Um, so my mistake before was that I said that these were the bolts that are gonna hold it down and that's not right. It's really these bolts. And I'm not used to plastic bolts here. Um, but just basically gonna go on like this and then this will snap down over top of it. Um, so we don't need to cut any of that bolt off. So we can actually start trying to Crank this down on both sides to see how much of a... And you want to, as you're tightening these, you want to kind of do it equally, do a couple on each side, kind of go down symmetrically to make sure you're compressing that seal evenly. So it's getting pretty snug now. So there's still a little bit of a wobble, especially front to back. So that's what we're gonna need to shore up. Um, oftentimes what works under here is a paint stick. So I'm gonna go get a couple different things to kind of show you what you can put either under the front or the back to kind of make up that gap. And again, the footprint of each toilet is a little bit different. So sometimes it was sitting perfectly on certain ceramic tiles and now another one's uneven um, and you just have to kind of wedge it in place and then anchor it down. So let's go get some scrap wood. Okay, so we went out to the garage. This is kind of my go-to from a spacer standpoint, it's just a paint stick. You can see I practiced staining on it, uh, or somebody did. <clears throat> this is usually about 3 16ths of an inch or so. I also just save random pieces of small you know, different thicknesses of wood. Um, so we're kind of take a look at some of those. Now, the other thing is you have to figure out, all right, it's rocking a little bit back and forth. Where do I want it to end up? So one tool I didn't show you, I didn't think we'd need it, was a level. You can throw a level on there and you can see which way it needs to go. So in this case, if you pull the back of the level up, you see that's what's gonna level your bubble. So really 
the front of it needs to go down the back of it up um, if you if you wedge the front it's going to get worse so you really want to wedge the back and uh, have that so what we can do is we'll loosen these bolts up a little bit on the side and we'll start to see if our uh, our biggest wedge fits under there first start with this paint stick and to start off you can see look at that look at how loose that is so we actually need more than that unless we crank down on it and it uh it grabs it quickly so what we can kind of do is and we can trim that a little bit once we're done so you can't see it so if we crank down on these now and it's still it's hitting a little bit all right it's really catching right here but it's still a little bit loose on the other side i can wiggle it you can see so <clears throat> let's see if i can tighten it just a little bit more and that won't matter as long as it stays in place so there's not much rock left at all. And levelness, we're still a little off. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and it could come up a little bit more, but I really can't push much more down on the front. Um, so what we can try to do, I'm gonna try just a little bit more to um, add to this wedge in the back and see where we end up. Put another one of these little pieces under here until we get the right thickness. Right now we're just kind of testing things, putting different thicknesses under there until we get it right. Because one thing you don't want to have happen is you sit down on the toilet and it's rocking. That's not comfortable. You don't feel safe. You want to make sure you got a nice, steady toilet bowl. Okay. So that, that's kind of the ticket right there. And one thing you can do is test it out. Sit on it. You should be able to sit on it, wiggle. It's not moving. It's not rocking. It's not making noise. Um, you can also just kind of lean on it with your hands. Try to rock it back and forth. So that's a nice steady fit, but we did have to wedge it in the back. So one nice thing is a lot of people want to see this nice clean edge here, and that's real close to the floor. There's really no need to caulk that. That looks like a nice finish there. Um, what we'll have is a little bit of a gap in the back. You could caulk that if you want, but now all we have to do is fix these shims so that you can't see them. You certainly don't want them sticking out like that. You could take, you know, your oscillating tool and just cut it like that. Um, but what I'd normally do is just try to get smaller pieces and then have it be on the inside of that so that you don't see them anymore. So uh, I'll go off camera and kind of fix that. We'll probably cut this paint stick into two pieces so we don't use and waste the whole thing. We don't need it that far. Um, and then we'll show you the finished product. Okay, here's what's left over those pieces. And if you, you look down here, you can see that there's a little bit of a gap. You could stick your finger under here. You can probably, even if you get way down there, see the, the wood. Um, but as long as you clip it off, you could caulk that if you want. I don't think it's necessary. It's going to be dark once you put the tank on it. Um, and it's got a nice, nice edge up front here. So you really don't need to do anything. And I'm not going to do anything. The only thing we're going to do now that these are tight and the bowl's not moving, we're just going to take our caps. Again, we didn't need to cut that off. You probably could have. You see there's a little gap here. And we're just going to snap those in place so you don't see the bolts. And now we're going to move on to installing the tank on the back. You see how it was nice not to have the tank here so you can work around everything. And you can see now also once we put this in, this is probably going to be a problem potentially. Um, so either you're going to have to hold this in to turn the water on. Um, or you'll take this screw off and you have to only do quarter turns and keep put repositioning the handle on there because this might be in the way. So eventually I'll end up cutting this back a little bit, putting a quarter turn valve in, 
uh, a newer valve because this is an older one, but that's a project for another weekend. All right, let's move on to the tank. Okay, again, here we are with the, make sure the washer stays in place. You see the bolts coming through. So you just wanna line that up as best you can with the bolts going through the holes. It'll set in place by itself. You can push on the... So now, again, my admission before, or lack of admission before, is these are actually gonna hold down and screw that bolt there. And these are gonna be the washers that go on first to kind of hold it in place. And this little tool is what's gonna help. So you have it like this and like this, and we'll start it on both of them. And then again, on the, on the tank, you can see how much it could go back left and right. You wanna make sure that you're doing it equally. So you're pressing that seal on there equally on both sides. So we'll start it on both, and then we'll go back and forth and tighten it to make sure that it's even. Just like on the bottom bowl to the floor, you wanna make sure that you do that even. Sometimes you might need to stick your hand in there and hold the bolt so it doesn't move on you. Now it could have been just spinning and doing nothing or it caught. All right, it caught. So that's one side, it started. So now we'll do this other side here and then we'll start tightening. I can see it. See if my washer will stay on there by itself. Yes, good. Okay, the washer stays on there by itself. Just like when we were putting the the bolt to the floor. Again, make sure you're turning this clockwise. When you're looking at it like this, it's gonna look counterclockwise, but always remember you're looking at it from the perspective of looking at the, the nut on the bolt. And we're upside down from it here. You can hear the clicking, that's that washer moving up. All right, got that side's tighter. And if you look at the front here, you'll see that it's crooked. See how much of a gap I have there because I tightened that side down a little more. So we got to make up for it. You hear the clicking some more. Sometimes the toilets and the tanks, they'll have like a little washer, like a, almost like a foam piece that'll go on the top and the bottom of the porcelain. This one didn't come with that. Okay, so that's tight on that side. We'll do one more over here. Okay, that's pretty snug. Now it feels like one piece. This isn't wobbling at all. And it's nice and tight on there. So that takes care of that. And if you had to, if you look down inside there now, you can even see that this uh, washer down here this rubber washer, that grommet that's around that is a little deformed, which is you want, you want that nice and tight on there so water can't get down through there. And that's one of the things you'll check after you hook everything up and turn the water on, let it sit for a while. If you develop, you know, um, drips underneath the, the commode down here, that means that your, your tank bolt isn't tight enough or there's something wrong with the, the rubber grommet. Okay, now we're gonna hook up the water line see if we want to use the same one if we want to get a different one this one looks like so you can see that this is kind of already deformed sometimes you buy it at like 12 inches but you need eight inches so you don't want to you know do hard loops but you can kind of curl it like this so that it works a little better and so we're just going to go ahead and try to reuse the same one and this one didn't spin as free. So what we'll do is we'll start it on the valve first in case we want to do 
just spin the whole thing around instead of trying to spin the nut. see how I'm, I'm letting the whole thing spin there's nothing really wrong with this but instead of fighting it I'm just letting the, the hose do most of the work all right so now it, it's tight there we're gonna get our crescent wrench on it now And you see how we're going to end up in a good spot right like that. So we want, don't want it to move too much more. You can kind of hold it pretty firm as you're tightening that nut. Alright, that should be good. Again, there's a washer in there. And this should just be hand tightened. Okay, so now we've got the water line hooked up. It's not on yet, but we should be able to turn it on. The only thing we really have to do back on the sink now is put the lid on the tank and put the seat cover on. Again, it's nice and sturdy. Um, if, if you develop a little bit of a, a wobble, you could take the, the caps off again and uh, try to tighten a little bit more, but I think this one's this one's in pretty good shape. So the first thing we're gonna do is see if we can turn the water on and it'll get noisy, this will fill up and hopefully we won't have any leaks, but we'll be ready for it and we can turn it off again if we do. So first thing you're gonna check are this, the seal down here where we connected it, the seal here where we connected it, and as it starts filling in the tank, you'll be looking for any drips that are coming from the tank bolts. You also want to take any water off that's been sitting there. You don't want to fool yourself by some existing water is thinking that you have a new drip and you don't. So let's see if we can turn this on. And it's a little tight, but we can turn it on. All right. It's filling up for the first time. You'll see water going in the bowl as well. Yeah, and you can see, sometimes you'll see a drip coming from this. That doesn't matter, it's gonna stay in the tank. Um, probably shouldn't do that. This is the, the water valve assembly. And if you don't know how a basic toilet works, this is the float. So when it gets to a certain point, it tells it I have enough and it'll turn off. And you, most of them see this has a screw slot here that you can adjust it. If you want it to go less water, more water, you can adjust it some. Or if it's continuing to run, um, you can play with this and make sure you do it. Um, adjust it so you have it the way you want it. And over time, you'll develop a line, a water line. You'll see where it's supposed to be. That's one of the good things. The old toilet, you could tell that there was a leak because there was a water line and I turned the water valve off and you could see three or four hours later, it had dropped down from where the water level was. So you see this one ended right at the tube and so I don't hear any leaks. You check down here. What I always do, you can either take a um, paper towel or something, see if it gets wet, but I just make sure my finger's dry and I rub all around it to make sure that my finger doesn't get wet. So we check there, all around here. Doesn't mean there won't be water an hour from now, but right now there isn't. So you can always put a paper towel down and just leave it sit there overnight and see if any water drips come and it would be wet. But right now it's looking pretty good. Um, we're gonna go ahead and flush it. And you're also gonna look at the bottom of the toilet. If that seal isn't working and you flush it, guess where the water is gonna come? Out on the floor. It's not gonna go down the drain. So we'll give it a flush here. And no water is a good sign. Okay, we're going to assume that's good unless we see a, a water leak develop. Um, 
And again, we might need to adjust that later. But now all we have to do is put the toilet seat on and then we'll be done. Okay, so now we have the toilet seat itself. Uh, majority of toilet seats now have this nice closure. You used to in the past see all the bolts and metal and everything and it would corrode. Now you get the plastic bolts, uh, so they work much better. Sometimes you'll even have a little um, piece of foam here to help um, kind of seal it and keep it from moving. Um, but the majority of the time, the, the seats stay relatively stable. Um, so they basically give you a plastic bolt and washer, and you're going to put this on the underside and this through. So you want to just kind of set those in there. And this is usually a two-handed operation. Again, you can just start them. Um, and once you do, you can see how this has this big lever. And what happens is you won't be able to turn it just by turning that nut the whole way. You can usually turn it to get it started. But this is where you'll just want to hold it and let it hit against something. And then what you'll do is use a screwdriver on the top side. And you always want to line this up. If you look top down here, you can see it's off a little bit. So as you're anchoring this, you want to adjust this so it's where you want it. They give you enough room there. So you want to try to put the seat exactly where you want it. And then try to be careful not to move it as you just hold the nut underneath and screw the screw in. And you can still adjust it. What I do is try to get a little bit snug, and before I tighten it all the way, I check um, my position of the seat again. And these are usually pretty easy to turn. See, it's kind of getting snug now, so I don't want to go any further on that side. Check my size here. These are fairly long bolts, so it does take you quite a few turns to get them till they're snug. All right, so it's starting to get snug. So now it's snug. It, you can move it if you want, and that will allow you to do your final adjustment. And you really shouldn't have to hold the nut anymore at this point. It, it's been driven high enough up there. You can hear it squeaking because it's sitting against the bowl and then just tightening up now. So now that seat's in good shape. It's sitting there. Again, if you sit on it a couple times and it loosens up, you can just crank on those. You don't want to do it too much. You don't want to break them. And then these just will snap in place. So you're done. And this is one of those soft closed seats, so it's not going to slam. It'll just go down slow. I think those are well worth it. You're not hitting yourself in the leg kind of thing. Um, and the last thing we have to do is put the tank lid on and we're done.